Thanks for coming to my home. It will be great to talk about our visit to Nick Navin's lab at MD Anderson. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, it was really interesting to hear about all the applications for single cell sequencing. And if, even if you're not interested in single cell sequencing, the approach of using smaller but homogeneous cell populations can really simplify the interpretation of biological systems. That's absolutely right. And you know, this is a supplement to the main episode in Adventures in Genomics. So if you haven't checked out the main link, please be sure to check that out first. The link will be in the description below. Jacques, I really like Nick's description of punctuated evolution. Intuitively, you would think evolution is a more continuous process. You know, it's a critical distinction because punctuated evolution provides an opportunity for therapeutic intervention. When a population is stable, you can select the best drug for that population. And that is a good thing. If there were continuous evolution, it would have been impossible to pick a drug to address the whole population. The single cell capture was a real challenge compared to the laser capture. It was very hard to even see the cell. Well, that was the point. It is very difficult to appreciate just how small a single cell really is. But you do get a sense of the scale when you actually have to manipulate the cells manually. That's right. You know, I mean, we know what a pasture pipette looks like. And then you can see just how much thinner it was after it was drawn out. Yeah, you know they aim to get the tube at about 100 micron thick, and that's about the thickness of a human hair. Then when they put it next to the cell, it almost looks like a giant water pipe. <laughs> it takes a lot of skill to capture that tiny little cell, and it's obviously not a high throughput process. No, and many publications use flow cytometers to sort cells based on their physical characteristics. Cell sorters are particularly good for blood cancers and immunology where the cells are already dissociated. But you do lose spatial information. Ultimately, the best tool depends on the question the researcher is asking. Nick gave us a detailed list of single cell applications. Some of them are really surprising. Why don't we have a look at some of them? What applications really jumped out at you? Right, so over the last uh, five years or so, since these methods have really become available, um, there have been a number of applications in many broad and diverse fields of biology. Um, some of those fields include areas like microbiology. So in the past, it was only, um, uh, uh, in the past, we've only been able to sequence um, organisms that we can culture in the laboratory. So 99.99% .99 of all microorganisms cannot be cultured in the laboratory. And now we can sequence those cells uh, directly from environmental samples like the ocean or from uh, dirt or other samples and uh, understand which genomes are present and what their diversity is. Another area is immunology. So um, now we can take uh, single cells uh, that are immunocytes and challenge them with antigens like uh, bacteria, for example, and see the differential responses in their transcriptional profiles as you stimulate them. Another area is neurobiology. So as you know, the brain is composed of many different diverse cell types. And now we can really start to dissect those cell types and understand their transcriptional diversity in the brain. Another area is tissue mosaicism. So in the past, we've all thought that our normal tissues are genetically identical. Um, but now we're starting to learn that if we look at mutations that occur very early on in development, um, they can then uh, be inherited by cells and can lead to mosaic mosaicism within your tissues. And some of those can give rise to diseases, possibly even things like cancer. Prenatal genetic diagnosis is another big area where we can now take uh, blastocysts that have been uh, generated by uh, introducing a sperm in an oocyte and growing the cells until they're about 100 cells or so. And then we can do that for about 20 or so blastocysts. And after that, we can take off one cell from each blastocyst and do a genomic analysis and see what mutations it has based on the recombination that occurred uh, bet between the, um, uh, the uh, mother and the father. And this is important, especially when they carry deadly genetic diseases that you don't want to inherit in the child. And then you can select the most genetically optimal blastocyst and implant that into the uterus, and that'll give birth to a healthy child. Um, embryology is another area where very early on in development, you only have a few cells. 
But during those initial stages, there are lots of transcriptional changes that occur and regulation that we just haven't been able to study because there's such a few number of cells. Um, development is another very interesting application. So we can look at organs as they develop, things like the lung, where um, previously we relied on just a few markers that people have studied in depth. But if you do single cell transcriptional profiling at different stages of development, you can identify hundreds of markers that distinguish these lineages. Um, and then uh, cancer, of course, is a very big area of research. And there are many applications in studying intertumor heterogeneity um, and also clinical applications. The trip to the Data Analysis Center was the highlight for me. Once a geek, always a geek. You can see just why cloud computing is becoming so popular in small labs. Because they do not have to buy and maintain these huge systems. You only rent a part of the system and you use it when you need it. You know, and if you go with applications like Basepace, you don't have to install or uh, the software or update it. And that really offers an easy entry to the data analysis. You know, I still cannot get over the fact that the tiny little cell is able to produce over a terabyte of data. That just seems impossible. In some ways, it's an underestimate because techniques like GNT-seq can provide both the genome sequence plus the RNA. So that doubles the amount of information. And you know, for a significant experiment with thousands of cells, the data analysis would be monumental. Yeah, but remember, for a large number of cells like that, you only care about the differences between the cells. So it should be possible to compress the data significantly. But you should also remember to capture the spatial information so that you can determine the cell-cell interactions. Absolutely. I mean, cells are the fundamental elements of life. It is just incredibly exciting to imagine just what we will discover next. If you have ideas for other topics we should cover, please leave your comments below. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and share the video.